Hello, and welcome to Embracing the Fight. I am Erica Lamar, your digital creator and host. And if you've been with me since January of 2023, let me first say thank you. Thank you for subscribing, supporting, sharing this channel to help me get the message out to the masses. I truly appreciate it because I created Embracing the Fight to help normalize the conversations surrounding physical and mental health issues and concerns. I've invited guests on to tell their personal stories and testimonies, as well as the fights that they are currently in, as I started the conversation off with my journey through thyroid cancer. I know that by sharing my story that someone out there heard it and they see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not an oncoming train. It is healing. It is growth. It is lots of different things. It's whatever you believe and strive for it to be. You can't give up hope just because it didn't work well for someone else. There's always a possibility that it can work for you. So I'm asking if there's anyone out there who's listening to this podcast that would love to come on and share their story, their testimony, or their personal fight, I would love to have you. Please send me an email to operations at diversitydesigned.com. Or you can also put, you know, your information down in the bottom in the comments, or you can reach out to me on any social media platform because I'm on Blue Sky, I'm on X, um, Facebook. I'm, I think I'm on everything except Snapchat. And it's not that I don't want to be on Snapchat. It's just one of those things that I don't quite understand because the pictures disappear, but that's neither here nor there. But you can reach out to me on any social media platform and I ask that you subscribe there as well. Um, then I'll reach back out to you. We'll schedule a time and we'll just have a conversation. And the this podcast is not scripted at all. We just have a general conversation where I ask questions based off of your particular journey. So see how simple that is? I would love to, love to, love to have you as a guest. And if you know of someone that may not be subscribed to Embracing the Fight and they have a story, you could put me in contact with them as well. I would love to talk to them and share their story. Now that I have gotten the business of all of this embracing the fight out of the way, let's talk about episode 95. Why wait? So you think about it, it's, it's the holidays, right? And everyone looks at the upcoming holiday, Thanksgiving, you know, in different ways. Um, some people do not celebrate Thanksgiving because of the true implications of its history. And if you don't know, basically lots of Native Americans were sacrificed during this time in various ways. So take the time to understand the history of Thanksgiving. Then you have those people that do, you know, celebrate Thanksgiving, but they're not celebrating the fact that you know, Native Americans lost their lives, their homes, their land, you know, livestock, all that. They're not celebrating that. They're celebrating togetherness and family. And they're thinking of different ways, you know, to say why they're thankful. You're starting to see people do these different friendsgivings where they have their friends over. It's all decorated really nice. And they have all the, you know, the full spread with the turkey and the beans, greens, tomatoes, all that, all that good stuff, you know, out on the table. And everybody's talking about the good things that happen in our life. So help me understand why we wait to Thanksgiving to do that. Some people won't live to see, you know, Thanksgiving, let alone you know, Christmas or any other holiday. So why wait to say thank you? Why wait to celebrate, you know, a person's life or accomplishments for a particular date that has been, you know, given to us by the government? Think about it. What if you could go to the cemetery and one of your loved ones is there. If you could pick up a phone and and literally call them and tell them thank you for everything that they've you know ever done. You know how powerful that would be? So why not do that when the person is alive? You know, I get it. We're all busy. We we have our own uh separate lives. We work, we we volunteer, we 
you know, have to run households. We cook, we clean, you know, we, we have people over, we do all these different things, but in, in the whole process, when does anyone stop to say thank you? So let's, let's think about it. Imagine you're the one that's cooking everything, you know, for Thanksgiving. You didn't learn how to cook. Well, most people don't learn how to cook just by picking up a recipe and trying it. It's from someone either showing them, you know, how to prepare this particular dish or it's by them spending time and observing the person that makes the dish, right? So let's just think about, you know, grandma. Grandma's in the kitchen, you know, she's the one who does the uh, potato salad, the macaroni and cheese, you know, the collard grains, the things, the, the, the main staples. She does those things because she knows that, you know, it's going to turn out well. And that's something that people, you know, really want a lot of. And if it's nasty, you know, nobody's going to eat it. But if you're in the kitchen and you're learning from her and you pick up all these wonderful skills and then she's gone. Did you ever tell her, you know, thank you for taking the time to show me how to feed my family on very little? Did you ever say, you know, thank you to your parents for show, for them showing you how, you know, to keep your home clean, how to pay bills, how to invest, whatever, you know, thing that they taught you? Did you just assume that because, you know, they're your parents. They're obligated to teach you these things. Well, if you think that way, what about those kids who are abused? What about those kids who are in foster care? Those kids that were orphaned or abandoned. Children that were homeless. That have become adults and have no idea what the sense of family is truly like because they were robbed of it at a very young age. But here you are, you had the family, you had, you know, the parents, the grandparents, aunts, uncles, people who sold into your life to teach you things. And you took that as, oh, this is what, you know, they're supposed to do because they brought me into this world and they're responsible, you know, for me. Well, if that were the case, what about those people that I just mentioned? Someone brought them into the world as well, but their circumstances are quite different, you know, from yours. So with that, when is the last time that you actually said thank you for something that has truly shaped your life? Imagine growing up and you see your parents working extremely hard and they, they put you through school or they give you, you know, the down payment for a car, a house, or they help to support you by pledging some money to the business that you would like to start. Is this something that you think they're supposed to do out of obligation? No, it's not. This is something they do, one, because they love you, and two, because they want you to succeed. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with saying thank you or showing your appreciation for what they've done for you. So like I said, Thanksgiving comes around. We're all sitting around the table, and someone says, oh, let's just go around the table and say one or two things that we're thankful for. And then, you know, some people, it'll get to them and they won't have anything to say. They just kind of laugh or, you know, joke it off. And they literally think that they have nothing to be thankful for. So to those people, I would like to say that you do, you absolutely do have something to be thankful for. If you're able to sit at this table with your family, you have the full activity of your limbs, even if you don't have all of your limbs. You're able to sit with your family. You're able to be amongst the living. You have a chance to continue to live and to grow. You can make a difference or a change in your life. You're not in prison. You are not a vegetable. And you're not alone. You're not sitting in a place by yourself with no one to call family. No one to check on you. That makes me think about several years back, there was a man in the Northern States. I want to say he was in Michigan, but he was a former, former. Um, I think he was in the Navy, but he was a veteran. And he 
basically didn't communicate very often with people on the outside. And yes, he had children, but he didn't talk to them. So it was it was kind of odd because, you know, all his bills and everything continued to be paid. And one day the landlord came because he was a month late on his rent. He'd never, you know, been late on his rent. Everything else he had was like auto pay. But I think his rent or something was not, or no, I'm telling the story wrong. Everything that he had was auto pay. And when the rent money didn't come, that person went over to check on him and they found out this guy had been dead maybe three years, not three days, three weeks, three months, three years. And the only reason that the um, rent didn't get paid is because his bank accounts were now exhausted. Everything continued to be paid like normal, like he had utilities, he had everything. And this man went three years with no one, not even his neighbor, you know, checking on him. So imagine, you know, what it would be like if you were his family member and you were to hear this. Like for three years, this man was gone and nobody even recognized or realized, you know, that he was gone. It didn't say that he was a mean person or a nasty person. He just really kept to himself. But even with that, every once in a while, I'd say you should reach out, you know, and check on your friends and see how they're doing and basically thank them for whatever capacity or whatever thing it is that they bring into your life. Because the worst thing that I've ever seen is the regret on people's faces when this person is no longer here. And they say, there's so much I wish I could have told them. Or I didn't know they were sick. Well, if you were to call or visit more often than unless, you know, they're like really private people and they don't, you know, want to burden you or tell you about whatever it is they have going on, then of course, you know, there's nothing you can do, you know, or say about that. But I'm saying those folks that you genuinely call and care about and you ask them how they're doing or you go visit and you see how they're doing, just be mindful that when you say thank you, they feel valued. That too can sometimes help to, you know, improve their health because when people feel good about themselves, or they feel like they are wanted or needed, they'll tend to get better. Now, I'm not saying this in all cases, but I'm saying in the cases where you hear about people dying of a broken heart, it's like, what caused it? Did no one ever go to see them? Did no one ever let them know that they were valued? And that is what thank you does. Thank you lets you know that you're appreciated, and what you did is value and it has shaped their life in some way, fashion, or form. Thank you is a powerful word. And it's not one of those things. People don't just, you know, throw out a bogus, you know, thank you. Thank yous really have weight. They really have meaning. Now, of course, you know, you've got those little kids that you have to tell to say thank you. But no, I mean, those heartfelt, sincere thank you when you become an adult. When you understand the, the gravity of someone taking the time to help you, to assist you, to teach you, to groom you, to show you that you can seal it with something as powerful as a thank you. Think about it. They used to uh, have these very nice, very flowery, you know, thank you cards and Hallmark and People would send those things like after weddings and different things like that. But just imagine if you went to your mailbox and there is a person that's standing there, you know, not, not the postman, but say somebody in your family and they, they hand you an envelope and they say, you know what, you got a big envelope from somebody that you hadn't seen in 10 years and you open it and they're telling you they're graduating from college and it's all because of you. Thank you for being there. Thank you for helping me. That does something for you. So I was watching, um, it was like a short clip on TikTok. And there was a lady that was a teacher that had had surgery. And 
the type of surgery that she had, you know, was critical. It was something that she needed. Um, and if she didn't get it, you know, soon, then she was going to die. But the teacher had already, you know, decided in her heart that she couldn't afford it, that something would have to be done in order for her to be able to have the surgery. Well, anyway, she gets, you know, out of surgery and there's a card, you know, that I, th I don't know if it's her daughter or sister, whoever, someone was there with her after she got out of surgery and they handed her a card. Well, she opens the card and she's reading the card and the card is basically saying, you know, I was your student and you saw something in me when no one else did. You did not give up on me. You would not give up on me. And I just really wanted to say thank you. And the whole time she's saying, she's like, I'm wondering, you know, who this is. And as it goes on, it, they, it gives the name of the young man that she's talking about. And then she says, oh, yes, he was, you know, he was a little bit difficult, but I saw something in him and I wouldn't give up. And then she kept reading and he was like, thank you for not giving up on me. He said, I took that nature and I went to medical school. And after medical school, I, I specialized in surgery. So I'm now a surgeon. Now, he didn't say specifically what type of surgery, because I think, you know, they really wanted to keep whatever type of surgery she had private, but basically said he was a surgeon. And not only did they have this thank you card, they also had these long, um, long stem red roses. And they were laid on the bed next to her. And at the end of the letter, it basically said that, you don't have to worry about, you know, paying for the surgery. I'm already taking care of it because for what you did in my life, I could never repay you because when I should have been nothing, I became everything because of the belief that you had in me. And they said, thank you, whatever his name was. And so she's crying and she's sitting there and she's like, you know, I wonder where he is now. He was right there behind her. She turns around, she sees him, she cries, and it clicks. She realizes that he's the one who performed the surgery. Not only did he perform the surgery and save her life, she didn't have to pay for it at all. Because of the kindness that she gave, that she didn't wait to Thanksgiving, she didn't wait to Christmas, she didn't wait to his birthday, she didn't wait until the 4th of July, Juneteenth. She didn't wait for any of that. Every day, she dropped a seed in his life because she did not want him to give up. And he basically said to her, I saved your life because you saved mine. And that was the ultimate thank you. Think about it. The people that you are sowing into right now have a thank you waiting for you. But at the same time, why wait? Why not give the thank you today? So if there is a special teacher, a minister, a friend, a family member, um, co-worker, employer, anyone that has helped you become who it is that you are today and they are still living please take the time to reach out to them and say thank you. Now, you may not be able to thank them in such a grand way as this young surgeon did, but your, third, your, your thank you can still have that lasting effect. Because people don't know, you know exactly what happens with the good that they do. Because I've met people that have written books with the hopes of helping someone but it's not like somebody comes back with a book every time and says, hey, you know what? I changed my life because you wrote this book. Thank you. I'm now a millionaire. People don't do that. And that's something that I think that we should do more of because when people feel, you know, appreciated, it's like a chain reaction. You feel better. You want to help more people and you want to see more people do better because you knew that whatever you did to help someone actually made the world a better place because you got so many people that's fighting and going through so much stuff, you know, in this day and age that 
people forget to say thank you. Think about it. You would be walking in the grocery store or not, not the ones with the automatic doors, but those doors that you have to open and hold open. Some people, when you open the door and hold it open, they'll walk past you, won't even touch the door to hold it. They're just like, you supposed to do that for me. Just But think about it. What if you let the door go in their face? Then they're upset because, oh, you let the door go in my face, but you didn't, you weren't going to say thank you or you didn't say thank you. But there's a flip side of this. You don't do good deeds and kind things for recognition. You do it because of what's in your heart. Everything that comes after that is just icing on the cake. If it's a thank you, if it's a gift, if it's a hug, if it, you know, is a, a long conversation, whatever it is, you're supposed to do good and kind things and give gifts and let them go. Because if every time you give something, you expect something in return, then why even give it? You know, it's like, who are you? Think about what if, what if you were on the other end of that? Like, say, for instance, if you were the one who didn't have the money to do something and someone gave it to you and they're standing there with this smug look on their face, like, hmm, look what I did for you. And they get joy you know, out of knowing that you have less than they do and this builds them up in some weird way whenever they can help the less fortunate and people grovel to them is basically how they feel. A, you know, a, a thank you comes off, I should say. It comes off as a grovel to people who are giving for self-gratification. But you don't give for that. You're supposed to give and let it go. Because the word says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. So if you out here giving with the expectation of giving, there's not necessarily a good, good thing or a blessing in store for you because of that. Now, I can't speak for God. He might just say, you know, Erica, you're wrong. I'm going to bless them anyway. Hey, hey, hey. He can, he God, he can do whatever he wants to do. I'm just saying from my interpretation if you're doing that sort of thing, then you might as well not even give the gift because it's it's like you want to be God. You want to be the one that saves the day every time in your name, but not in his name. So that's why you have to give the gift and let it go. So he gets the glory and not you. That thank you when you do do something good is just verbal appreciation for it coming to them. Now, God purposes us to do things for poor people so they can see him through you. And if you put yourself in the way to get the glory, then how's God going to get the glory? And how are these people going to be thankful to the Lord for something that you claim to have done? Those two things don't match. They don't go together. So what I think you should try to do is give, let it go. And then if something comes up and the person, you know, says thank you, then it's an absolute beautiful thing. But you can't force a person to be thankful. That's why I said, you know, why wait? Because people are receiving help you know, all the time from different places in different ways. And sometimes they might just get to a point where they feel like this is what I deserve. This is what I'm supposed to get. I don't have to keep saying, you know, thank you to get these things. But that's not true either. You have to be grateful. You have to be humble and grateful all in the same time because God made a way for you to get those things. So why wait on saying thank you? So, as always, I appreciate you for taking a moment out to watch this episode of Embracing the Fight, episode 95, Why Wait? So when you get off of here today, I need you to think of at least two, three people that you haven't spoken to, that you're thankful that they're in, their, in your life, and just say thank you. Don't wait till Thanksgiving. Don't wait till Christmas. Don't wait till their birthday. Don't wait for any special occasion or holiday. Pick up the phone 
and say thank you because you never know when this may be the last time you have the opportunity. And as always, I want you all to have an absolute amazing day. <laughs>